Hello, this is the Monday Agenda with me, Finn Ganwa Simbeye. Today on the program, we have a very special guest. Uh, she is Dr. Rasha Kereg, CEO of Make Foundation, an institution that is working on improving the health system of developing countries, uh, in this case, Africa and Tanzania, in our case. Will be, uh, is already benefiting from uh, Make Foundation. Dr. Kerej, welcome. To you. Thank Kerej. you very welcome much for having program. me. Good. You know, Merck Foundation is a non for profit organization and it's the first foundation owned by Merck uh, Germany. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's the oldest pharmaceutical and chemical company in oh, the world. The largest in the yes. world. Yeah. Yeah, so so it's, uh, it's the oldest. Yeah. So established 350 years ago, which 2018, this year, we are celebrating actually the 350 years anniversary wow. of Merck. So it is fantastic and it's a very unique uh, year for us and uh, you know, through all these generations, uh, Merck taking CSR, corporate social responsibility, and being part of the community as part of their DNA. Having the foundation is not a new thing, it's actually all the programs about corporate social responsibility with their four generations. Okay, but uh, we decided to establish the foundation to consolidate all the programs and activities we are doing since years under uh, one umbrella. This foundation is looking at uh, the whole world. You, you are operating the whole all world, countries. The developing yeah. countries. We're focusing most, mostly, of course, in developing countries. Mm -hmm. Countries uh, who has communities un unprivileged and have no uh, uh, no proper access to information and uh, healthcare. Mm -hmm. So it's our role, of course, to uh, co uh, contribute to development socially and economic development of these countries. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And uh, is it limited to? countries where Merck has businesses or are you going just to any no, other I countries actually, in need? We go in countries uh, in need, definitely, and uh, there is too many countries who still don't have any uh, existence as commercial uh, entity, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we see that our role to, to contribute to uh, uh, their needs and requests. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if I receive any request from any country in the world that they need us to help and contribute with our expertise and our, our uh, programs, uh, I don't think twice. We don't think twice. The Board of Trustees, uh, they always approve any contribution to all these countries because this is the main objective of establishing the foundation. Mm. If the country wants to be assisted, they have to approach you. If we find the right, smart partners who uh, is uh, um, very serious uh, and long-term um, a relationship we uh, approach them uh, ourselves if not we uh, we of course receive requests and when you receive requests definitely we evaluate and see how can we do it and and uh, what part of partnerships we can uh, we can establish but the key is a long term serious and uh, committed partnerships local partnerships mm. and what what does it involve i've seen out of the literature which I have that you looking at various various areas in the health sector. I see that a lot of global efforts going to the mm. uh, infectious disease and yeah. communicable disease. So we said that this is an area, there is a gap, especially the, as a burden of this communicable disease, for example, like cancer and diabetes and hypertension is increasing dramatically. So uh, I think uh, prevention has a very important role and also building capacity. So building capacity for uh, uh, us, we st strongly believe that building capacity is the right strategy to improve uh, access to quality and equitable healthcare solutions because with uh, training all these uh, doctors and the healthcare providers what they're gonna do they will be able to be ambassadors in their communities to better manage and prevent the diseases and this is what we want of course we decided to in cancer specifically it's a very important uh, disease and uh, we developed a very unique uh, fellowship uh, programs for one year and two years and three years in uh, three locations uh, of training institutions Tata Memorial Hospital in India and also in the University of Alexandria in Egypt and we are going to expand to University of Cairo as well and uh, we have also a uh, University of Nairobi we developed the first first uh, medical oncology fellowship programs two years in University of Nairobi and we are going to uh, uh, we just signed a uh, partnership MOU with the University of Malaya in Malaysia 
So we also we can't send fellows there for oncology uh, training, uh, our fellowship uh, for one year. So mm -hmm. this is a really a great uh, program. I feel that uh, it will add uh, a great uh, value to uh, to Africa uh, because we committed to have uh, to increase the number of limited uh, oncologists in, in the continent. Till now we have 50, 50 yeah. oncologists. Going continent. to yeah in the whole continent so in 2017 they will be graduated in 2018. Are the ones who are, who are they are now yeah. Okay. So uh, uh, of course I I don't, I don't think I, I don't know the number of oncologists in Africa but it will not be more than this maybe yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, if you uh, uh, exclude the radiologist and we are talking about the uh, uh, only sub-saharan african country mm. because what we are doing is medical oncologists medical. yes which is very important yeah, yeah. why and people okay in in, uh, in tanzania who are your partners now you're working with government of course the government of tanzania and ministry of health i came last year end of the uh, end of the last year yeah. and met uh, her excellency the vice president of tanzania dr samia and uh, she was great support and uh, we are going to co continue our partnerships and our talks uh, of course now we have something to talk about because the programs always been uh, started in tanzania either the hypertension and diabetes and oncology merck more than a mother will start soon which we did not talk about it yeah. it's, yes <laughs> it is it is a campaign for infertility yeah. so i think uh, uh, we are in the start but it's a long-term relationship so mm. we are not going to say everything in one year it mm. will take uh, years and uh, we will be here in tanzania for years to come yeah. for me tanzania is the first country to visit mm -hmm. in 2018 and last yes. year you came also in july after uh, being appointed yes CEO. in july exactly, exactly why why did why have you fallen in love with tanzania <laughs> <laughs> you know tanzania is a very important uh, uh, definitely country in uh, in africa mm -hmm. and very close to all our hearts and it's unique culture and uh, uh, i feel the government is very serious and making a development and making a real, real impact and, uh, and progress. And this is how I evaluate the efforts. When I see the government is really serious and they are going to take our efforts seriously and forward and improve it. So, uh, of course, we focus more. These is the foundations, uh, the, the activities, are they also going to include Medication. Merck Foundation is completely uh, separate than uh, Merck Commercial, yeah. and we don't even uh, uh, talk about the commercial and what the commercial entity is doing. It's completely uh, operated different. in a different way. I have a different CEO, like. Um, like me, I don't have any idea about what the business is doing. So medication, we don't know about it, and we don't uh, we don't involve it in our programs. Our programs purely non-for-profit and uh, we're focusing on capacity building, improving access to healthcare, and empowering women and youth in uh, science and technology. And uh, in the area of uh, training. So we, it's just the oncologists or the no. other areas also? No, uh, there is diabetes and hypertension as well diabetes. because uh, already we have uh, candidates, uh, we give them uh, one year diploma, of online diploma for diabetes and hypertension. Mm. And of course there is fertility. As I told you, Merck More Than a Mother is yeah. a campaign, very important campaign for us. And uh, it's about empowering women and fertile women uh, through access to health information and change of mindset. Because women in uh, Tanzania in Africa in general, in many cultures, they are mistreated and discriminated due to their infertility. Mm. And of course, uh, if you know certain numbers, you understand that building capacity and raising awareness is very important because 80 percent, uh, uh, almost 85 percent of the causes of infertility due to untreated infectious diseases, mm. which is resulting from complication due to child marriage, genital mutation, STDs, or unsafe abortion, unsafe delivery. Mm. All these uh, uh, behaviors we are advocating against every year. It uh, it's, uh, can cause complication of infectious diseases, which is not treated in the right time and early enough can cause infertility. So mm -hmm. prevention is very important. So we are raising awareness about prevention. But how can we reach to all these villages and rural areas? We need to train doctors. Yeah. So we actually opened the training for uh, three months for infertility specialists and embryology specialists and embryologists, which is uh, uh, actually in Tanzania, we have now six candidates we trained okay. and we're still going to train more Why are they trained? Uh, in India yeah. and secondly uh, uh, we want to encourage men yeah. to speak openly about if there is any problem of infertility mm. uh, to share the journey of the with their wives to mm. go to the doctor with their wives because they have to understand 
the responsibility of infertility is 50% for men, 50% for women. So women are not the one who is solely responsible for infertility. Men also has a role uh, uh, in this and 50% That's all scientifically. All yeah. Problem. So yeah, so it's a cultural <laughs> problem because they know that the woman is the one who is bearing the child in her uh, body. So you think that she is the only one responsible for infertility? No, of course not. It is. It takes two to tango yeah. and it is two uh, of the responsibility. So when the woman cannot have children for two, three years, what happened? I abuse her and violence and psychologically breakup, and well. marriage breakup. There's no need for this because it's a condition can be treated and it is a journey between the man and woman and both of them, they have to go to the doctor to have a happy, fa happy family, yes? So. When I was looking at this, I was like, uh, doctor is uh, trying to go into uh, some kind of very um, controversial waters because here we have the government and some uh, international organizations saying you guys in Tanzania you are the production is very high yes and we, you can't find you can't fight poverty when your reproduction is high and your growth especially in agriculture which employs the majority of the people is low yes. so we got to fight this uh, reproduction it's rate it's yeah. different it's uh -huh. different because we are talking about family planning here family planning. so families who has 12 and uh, 10 uh, children yeah. should have only two or Four, three maximum three. Yeah. But the people who has no uh, child. child children at all, they had this human right for them to have at least one. So uh, the the, the, the incidence of infertility is too high. Although the infertility rate is infertility rate is very high in Tanzania, as you said, population overpopulated. But uh, uh, one every four couples are infertile in uh, Africa, oh. according to the WHO. So this is a very high number and uh, these people are suffering psychologically and public stigma. We need to change that culture and we need to give them their human rights. They have to have the place to go to be able to have at least one child. In this respect, what exactly the, would the intervention be? Are you going to like work with the ministry and the medical doctors to go out, as you have said, in the village and educate people that um, well? Even men can only be infertile. It's not only this. There's social media, there's media. That's yeah. why I have the interview with you. Yeah. When someone has a problem uh, having a child, it doesn't affect him as a person or a human being. It's still, that's why we say more than a mother, because we want to say women are more than just mothers. They are human beings, they are women, they can be productive members in society. Mm -hmm. So I rely very much on the media and the youth, the youth in the social media. But social, our social media, we have one million followers all young African. Oh. So I really feel that the future will be completely different story. Mm. But let us talk about the present at the moment. And this is the role of the media and us writing articles, speaking about it more. You know, like what happened in HIV in the beginning? Yeah. It was a stigma. Nobody yeah. wants to talk about it. Yeah. But now it's different. It's the same way. Yeah. Same way. Okay. Okay. How do you uh, select or how do you pick people? Uh, medical doctors or at, at what level at what level yeah mm -hmm. they have to be gynecologists definitely and uh, they've been recommended by either the fertility society of africa or by the ministry of health or by the university so after the recommendation we give them to the scientific committee of the institution we're going to train them to see if they are eligible and if they are eligible they just uh, uh, contact them and we uh, will provide the training and everything and what is the future of the because really capacity is an area where we have a lot of a big weakness yes and training medical doctors is very expensive yes. and currently you are taking them abroad uh, what are plans to have maybe train them if so that they can be men of them locally at the university That's why of we, dallas we Lamp. created we created uh, the first oncology fellowship program in nairobi and okay. university of nairobi so we can it can be here as a center at yeah. the moment for oncology and for the diabetes and hypertension we do it online uh, it's a one year online in south wales university in uk so every graduate will have a diploma accredited by uk which is very good cool. and there is a lot of now digitalization in education which is uh, uh, to overcome you know geographic barriers and and traveling uh, and so uh, step by step for for fertility we cannot do it at the moment because fertility still there is a lot of countries you don't have even one fertility specialist or embryologist so it's not like we have many now and uh, we will establish a center so at the moment uh, we, we chose to have the center in indonesia one center in indonesia one center in india and one center in malaysia 
which is Asia, South-South collaboration. Yeah, South -South. And in the mm -hmm. future, we will think about having a, a, an IVF uh, uh, or fertility uh, training center in Africa. Okay. Yes, definitely. I've seen that uh, out of the literature I got, there is also the issue of uh, empowering women. Yeah. Uh, to generate their own income because that's yeah. another big weakness. Yes. And what, what are you doing? Infertile women specifically. Yeah, yeah. Yes, okay. because when we see the infertile women, they have no purpose in life except um, uh, having uh, children, and they don't. When they lose this purpose, they have no other purpose in life. So and they, they accept all the insult and uh, they want just wait to die. And it's not correct. So they share their stories with us through the media and the videos. So people feel upset and they you know, and they want to change. But uh, these women, mostly, they are too late for them to get treated because either they are too old, or biologically, are not uh, uh, ready uh, because the infection since long time manifested in their body, mm. and the whole product productive system gone. So we said we cannot just leave them alone mm. like this. It's not ethical. So we group them in groups, and we start to build for them training uh, and uh, profession like a small business. For example, some of them we had catering. Catering, so they cook yeah, and yeah, restaurant, yeah. and some of them has chicken farms, so they can make eggs and chicken, and you know, mm -hmm. and sell chicken uh, frozen and stuff. And some of them like cows, so they can they can have cheese, and you can make cheese and milk, and so di different and sewing like dresses and fashion and stuff. So we create for them things, uh, businesses according to uh, what they like and what they feel that they can do, uh, and uh, build on their. Uh, on their skills. On our social media, Merck More Than A Mother uh, video, uh, Facebook and uh, website, it's uh, very easy. You can find all the stories of the transformation of women and type of businesses we established for them. It's really enlightening because yes, you can yeah. see the women transformed yeah. uh, from very de depressed, uh, uh, sad, uh, want to die uh, uh, woman to a very strong, even the way she talks and walk and you know, and in generate business, it's Confident. different. So in Tanzania, how many are being involved in this exercise? We just started, as I told you, at the end of last yeah, year. Yeah, I think uh, we had uh, how many women at the moment uh, we recruited? A uh, few women at the moment, but we are going to uh, to have more. The videos will be ready soon and it will be on social media. As I told you, it depends on the partners as well, because uh, usually in many countries, I partner with the First Lady um, uh, Foundation Mm. in each country for mm. example uh, Niger Chad yeah. uh, Central African Republic uh, Guinea yeah. Gambia all these first lady and uh, Nigeria first lady of Nigeria Sierra Leone first lady of Sierra Leone all these first ladies they identify the women mm. the infertile women yeah. and we cooperate with them to establish the training and uh, and uh, for these women so until we find someone who identify these women for us mm. Uh, uh, we will be able to. Uh, so, if any uh, organization know a uh, number of infertile women are suffering mm -hmm. in Tanzania, please to contact us yeah. in our website uh, www.merk-foundation.com. We have a, a, a hospital which has been trying to treat women who are fistula. It's also a big problem. Fistula. Yeah. Yeah. So, fistula also uh, causes mm, the, the mm. future. Yeah. They have managed, yeah, mm -hmm. they have managed to treat many of them. I think many of them are suffering just the way like those who are infertile. By the way, women. I have also a program about fistula. I yeah. will start in 2018. How many countries now are being involved? 25? 25, 25 Up to now. in Africa, yes. Sub Saharan. Yes, Sub Saharan, yes. And what does uh, have all of them, have all of them, uh, you discovered them yourself? Because I'm, uh, I know through partners as well, through partners. Like for example, when I have a TV interview uh, like this, uh, or I meet the scientific committee of uh, the uh, different countries, because we have a representative in our scientific committee from each country, fertility uh, society. Yeah. So Benin and Chad and uh, Mali and Malawi, they are representative from each, uh, even Gabon. So they always um, uh, we start from there mainly. I or the first ladies, we approach them as well, and uh, there is some of them are contacting us themselves. Yeah. And what is now the the future, doctor? If you look at 
10, 20 years to come. You have yes. said you want a I want long in the future relationship. 10, 10 years uh, to come. 10, I want when someone say infertile is not a stigma or it's not a taboo. Yeah. It's uh, a infertile like you have a cold, like you, you say diabetes, it's no, it's no problem, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. So infertility also, uh, the, I wanted to have no problem about it. There is some women contacted me and say, we have to s s select our words and we don't say that they are infertile women. I said, no, why? Infertility is not a bad thing. It is not even a stigma or a taboo, it's a condition. So they are infertile women and they can say proudly that they are infertile, they get treated or, or uh, they just go along with their lives and, and build a different uh, future for themselves and, uh, and contribute to the community in a different way. So this is very important. So this is a change of the culture I want. I want every man can I see every fertility clinic, the man and the woman, husband well. and wife together, <laughs> sitting together, talking and uh, finding solution like we see in Europe. Yeah. This is I want this in Africa very soon. I want to have fertility uh, a, um, a clinic and the IVF center uh, public in public health sectors yes, in every country. Uh, one, two, three, or even in different counties. This is the future. I want to have uh, many uh, students and uh, uh, in the schools, they are treating them how to prevent infertility. They are educating them how to prevent infertility in the schools. So they are ready and we eliminate uh, around 85% of the infertility. If we have worked on the prevention and education for the youth from now, we can eliminate a very, very high number of infertility. I want one day the, uh, to be embarrassed, to think if to be embarrassed because when it's, when it's become less, it can easily be embarrassed and not, uh, not burden on, on the economy. So these are all dreams. Uh, looking at uh, treatment now, if it, if, if it is if she, uh, how, to, how to treat infertile men and women, yes. that's another area which is very challenging in terms of the costs. Are, are we going to really come to a period when we have yes uh, definitely uh, look i mean in economy in economy science uh, if uh, something had demand more than supply what happens demand more than supply prices go down mm -hmm. when the supply more than the demand uh, prices go down well, yeah. so when we educate more doctors train more uh, uh, ivf and there is more ivf uh, centers around in the one country mm -hmm. what's happened competition in prices prices go down and uh, they are all local they don't have to travel abroad or bring someone from abroad so the cost will go down by automatically mm -hmm. like what happened in many many countries i'm not talking about something we are going to experience for the first time uh, 50 years ago, for example, in the place I live in UAE, that uh, treatment of uh, IVF uh, uh, cycle, it was so high 15 years ago. Now, because there are too many, it's almost tens yeah, lower yeah. in the price. So probably we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll reach yes, that place. Yes, definitely. I will contribute to this through Merck Foundation. Merck Foundation is very, very, very uh, keen to build a great capacity of fertility care in, in Africa. Mm. And I hope that I can... Uh, be a part of this when I'm CEO of Merck Foundation. And you said uh, this year you also want to introduce uh, Fistula. Any other areas you're going to? Uh, no, actually this is a new thing. So I'm uh, still thinking about it, but it's very much related to the fertility as yeah. well because there is too many in Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason uh, the cause the fertility is, uh, one of the causes is Fistula and it's too high incidence. So I think it's makes sense that we can contribute a little bit in Fistula as well as part of the prevention. And uh, when you met uh, the Vice President last year, uh, what did she have to say to you? Because you, I'm, I'm sure the challenge is... very, very, very keen. You can see also our meeting on, the, on social media. Uh, and uh, she was very, very keen to, uh, to be part and contribute. And uh, she saw that our, our uh, objectives and vision is very noble. And uh, she's very much, she's the ambassador of, uh, of uh, women empowerment, yeah. and UN ambassador, UN yeah, ambassador yeah, of women yeah, empowerment, sure. yes. <laughs> so of course, this is very much aligned with her, uh, with her uh, vision as well and uh, she's done a lot a lot of great things uh, for empowering women and we also doing a lot of things in empowering women in uh, in science and technology and then empowering women of course in fertile women through economic empowerment part of her also vision so I say uh, very much aligned with her own vision definitely mm -hmm. we chose to be specialized in cancer diabetes hypertension and fertility for four areas 
And of course, these are areas that are very important for Africa. One of the things which uh, women have been burdened with, as we've said, is many children. There is no family planning and access to contraceptives has been a problem because the funding from the government is, 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 is not adequate. You discussed that earlier with the Vice no, President. No, that's not our area. I told you that we are focusing on the infertility. So yeah. it's completely different than the family planning. Yeah. There is a lot of NGOs and big NGOs are focusing on the family planning. And of course, we leave them in their speciality and, and us with our speciality. Knowing that no other foundation in on earth, actually, yeah, it's not, they yeah. have done what we have done in fertility in, mm. uh, in Africa. So we uh, this by focus, when you focus. Mm. If you scatter yourself all over the place yeah, and you spread yourself thin, no impact will happen. And when you are talking about numbers, what are the numbers now? Are you, what numbers are you looking at? Yeah. I think we From aim for more than 150 oncologists uh, within five years and, uh, and also similar to fertility and uh, embryology specialists. Mm -hmm. uh, but also it depends on uh, uh, the people and the candidates because yeah. you can just give a number and then you don't have at mm -hmm. this year mm -hmm. candidates are willing to travel to train <coughs> or uh, the eligible and they have the, the right specialty. So it depends also on the environment around you, but I think it's achievable. Mm. And the numbers on, on, on the side of the women, you do have a target also there that we, we, we want by the next five years, say we, we're working with uh, maybe yes, 10 or 20,000 women. Yeah, something yeah. like this, yes, yeah. yes, yes. This is a number. I actually aim more to uh, uh, change uh, the culture in, uh, in uh, many places and, uh, and uh, recruit media uh, with us uh, because this is the media can go to every house yeah. and we can impact the change of the culture. So we don't have to say every year we have to increase the, the, the number of empowering infertile women because maybe the infertile women will reduce their numbers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they are not going to be needed any help in within five years. The the number of the people who women who needs help from us will reduce because they are not going to be suffering and stigmatized, mm -hmm. and maybe they are going to prevent their infertility, or they find a way to treat it, or they find uh, uh, someone to to uh, to uh, husband to take care of them. From Africa, where do you go next? You just uh, said it here, but we are going tomorrow to Uganda. Yeah. Huh? Yes, mm -hmm. and then uh, after that uh, I will go back and then I, uh, to Dubai and then I will go to Ethiopia because there is first ladies meetings in African Union. I will meet there to discuss also Mahmoud and Amadar and the step forwards and the, the strategies end of, this, yeah. end of this month. And then I will go to meet uh, both the first ladies of uh, Gambia mm -hmm. uh, to launch Mahmoud and Amadar in Gambia. Uh, and I will go to Senegal to uh, to start our programs in Senegal with the meeting also the First Lady of Senegal. So this is the program for the whole month. You come back later in Ethiopia, you'll be talking to these First Ladies? Yes, we have a meeting with the First Ladies in Ethiopia at the African Union mm. uh, with many uh, uh, topics and one of the topics uh, for us there, but it's not like exclusive for Mac Foundation, yeah. but it's a big meeting for many uh, organizations and I am one of them. And I've seen that in, uh, I, I, that's not for the foundation, I think. In Ethiopia, I've seen you have also doing something yes. very big there in the yes. area of Skiso. Yes, yes, yes. In Ethiopia, no, but in Ethiopia, we have a very important uh, meeting uh, with the, first, uh, the Minister of Health of Ethiopia. So. He is the ambassador of Merck more than a mother, and he is the first man to be ambassador for Merck more than a mother. Wow. Uh, and uh, he's a great man, and uh, he is a gynecologist by uh, profession. Oh. Before he become a minister of health okay. and he has this dream that to also to empower infertile women because he's seen a lot of cases during his practice mm -hmm. and a lot of women who are suffering so he took it very much uh, seriously mm -hmm. and I'm going to meet him when I go to Ethiopia and uh, uh, with uh, contribution from Merck and from the Ministry of Health they're going to establish the first IVF public IVF center in Ethiopia ah, good. and this is great great achievement it's making history actually mm -hmm. it's making history in, in, in Ethiopia so um, we made history in many uh, countries. For, for example, we trained the first uh, also IVF specialist and embryologist in Sierra Leone, oh. the first in Gambia, wow. the first in Guinea, going to be graduated in May, these uh, two countries, and uh, the first in uh, what was else, Liberia. Wow. So many, many countries, they never had even one <laughs> embryologist and, and fertility specialist just to treat 
normal cases and, and small cases. So I think Merck Foundation is making history in Africa. This is, we can say, without, it's a fact. As it's a, a fact, fact. Yeah, it's a fact. we're making in, history. In, in Tanzania, the first have... is, is history, and nobody can take it from you. No, no. Yeah? <laughs> increase number, you increase, you compete on numbers, yeah. but the first is the first, the and first, we yeah. are making history in Africa. Say, in in Tanzania, do we have IVF uh, experts here? Trained uh, almost six, I said, I told you. And ah, you've yes, already trained six? Six okay. from Tanzania, okay. yes, yes. Ah, good. So this is great, uh, but it wa they were uh, two uh, before we came, so mm -hmm. it will not be the first. But we train six, and they so are actually around eggs. around Tanzania. There, some of them working in Kilimanjaro, some of them working here in Dar es Salaam, in and another hospitals. area. Yes, yes. And at some point, we will have IVF clinics in public uh, hospitals. I think they them. are seriously talking about it, and we are going to support in the training, and I hope it will open soon. We establish also the help help in training and establishing the first IVF in Uganda in public sector in Uganda as well and it will be in the women uh, hospital it is uh, with the, our ambassador uh, minister Sara Obinti she's the minister of state of health of Uganda she's also a great lady she took it very serious and she's going to help establishing this IVF center which is going to open in May yeah. which is also be the first in Uganda for us in the media it's like um, probably we also will also need a lot of sensitization um, a lot of training because just to tell you this as well we are going to launch media recognition award okay. for journalists so they can uh, uh, send us stories either print or uh, uh, tv Sorry. interviews Sorry. about infertility or infertile women in their country okay. and this is a part of sensitization of the media yeah. and uh, we will uh, announce the award winners we are going we, we launched this last year for kenya and uh, and uh, actually we were going to announce uh, w winners uh, very soon in, in, in this quarter of the year uh, but i want to uh, spread it to all africa, africa. afghan journalism yeah. and we select the best uh, uh, winner and the award and i think this is going to be very nice because when we are announcing in kenya now many articles and interviews about infertility because it's uh, it's an award yeah. and sensitization and yeah. you know and they took it beyond the award of course because they grab personal interest when they know about it mm. and uh, you know media getting bored with uh, with uh, repetitive yeah. you know topics you're talking about mm -hmm. and if you open infertility and talking about infertility you have life experience uh, uh, things you never even hear about before uh, in your life sure. yeah? yeah so it's a new thing to inter attract the viewer. Mm. You have also a component of trying to, to train, to give us the basics, yes. journalists to know exactly what is... Uh, we, I think we can ha do something online about yeah. uh, infertility. Yeah. And also, if you go to our website, you just read uh, the yeah. things that you understand co completely what is the infertility is. Mm. And uh, we are doing it one-to-one uh, -one at the moment, but I think it's a good idea to have uh, a module specifically for media. media. I will work with my team on this to, yeah. to educate them about infertility, which is very important for Africa because it's a new thing. So with that, we've come to the end of the program for the day, and we had a uh, Mac Foundation. CEO Dr. Rasha Kerej. Uh, she's Egyptian, she's an African, and I'm very proud to meet her. Thank you, Dr. Kerej. Thank you. Good. Thank you Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.